A crash tragically claims the life of a McGoffin County high school student. A former Eastern Kentucky judge was arrested and big changes are coming to the city of Pikeville. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. The McGoffin County School District was stunned Monday after a car crash claimed the life of a high school senior just days before she would have graduated. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele spoke with administrators about their memories of the student and the loss felt by the student body. In just 18 days, seniors at McGoffin County High School will make their way across the stage and receive their high school diplomas. And the thoughts of each graduate will be on a classmate who couldn't be with them. 18-year-old Madison Nicole Allen died in a single vehicle collision Sunday after her car crashed into a ditch. We've got a good community here, but this is going to be something that's going to take us some time to heal from. A small community like we are, we all know everyone and you get close to the students. Maddie is remembered as an excellent student who was well liked by her peers. I always perceived Maddie as a quiet student. Uh, I saw her smile a lot, but when I've spoken with teachers and students today about her, uh, they've all told me that once you got to know her, she was um, funny, she had a very good sense of humor, and um, could um, be a straight shooter if she needed to be. K prep testing and all other school activities were canceled for today. Counselors were set up in the school library for students to utilize if necessary. You hope that you never have to deal with that, but when you do, it's just something that uh, is tragic. Flowers and a wreath will be set up at graduation in Maddie's honor. Officials tell me at this time there are no formal arrangements set up for Maddie. However, students are getting together to work on a video presentation full of pictures. We have some um, screens, video screens in our school that we use for messages and announcements and so forth. And they have asked to be able to do a in memory type uh, slideshow of her and they're working on that. Officials tell EKB News Maddie had planned to enroll in the University of Pikeville in the fall. Reporting in Sayersville, I'm Shelby Still for EKB News. A Morgan County attorney and one time district judge is in trouble with the law. It happened Monday after police were called to the Comfort Suites in Prestonsburg for a report of an intoxicated female. According to the arrest citation, when police arrived, they found 47-year-old Kimberly Ison Jevedon of West Liberty in the passenger seat of her vehicle. She allegedly told officers she had consumed, quote, a lot of alcoholic beverages. Officers also found several empty alcoholic beverage containers inside the vehicle. She is charged with alcohol intoxication in a public place. Jevedon served as district judge in the 37th district of Morgan, Elliott, and Carter counties until she was defeated in the 2006 election. A Floyd County woman was sentenced in Floyd Circuit Court for her role in the 2014 shooting death of Bill Collins. 42-year-old Jennifer Jernigan was originally charged with complicity to murder for allegedly aiding, counseling, or attempting to aid Floyd Sexton in planning the murder of Bill Collins. Thursday in Floyd Circuit Court, Jernigan was sentenced to five years in prison after pleading guilty to a lesser charge of hindering prosecution or apprehension, a Class D felony. Three years of Jernigan's sentence were probated because she has already served two years in jail. She was released after Thursday's hearing. Jernigan's attorney, Tommy May, says he is pleased with the results of this case and says this case was a prime example of innocent until proven guilty. Very pleased. I mean, anytime you go from, you know, being charged with capital murder uh, and go down to, a, you know, something like this where you get probation, uh, it's obviously a good day. A lot of times the public will prejudge a case. Uh, and they don't understand that an indictment or charge uh, is a very low standard for the prosecution to meet. Proving guilt of that uh, is much higher. It's rare that a case ever turns out uh, the way it seems at first. As part of her plea agreement, Jernigan will testify in the case of her co-defendant, Floyd Sexton.
A former deputy at the Kentucky River Regional Jail who was charged with assaulting an inmate who later died has been convicted. A federal jury in London found 60-year-old William Curtis Howe guilty of using excessive force and withholding medical treatment in the July 2013 death of 54-year-old Larry Trent, who was in jail after being arrested for a DUI. Evidence presented at the trial showed Howe and fellow deputy Damon Wayne Hickman beat Trent and left him in his cell bleeding from an open head wound. Hickman pleaded guilty prior to the trial and testified against Hal. Sentencing has been set for August 16th. Each charge against Hal carries a maximum punishment of 10 years in prison. Coming up, big changes are on the way for the city of Pikeville, but first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week in weather. That's coming up next on This Week. Hi, I'm Anita Wilson, Pikeville Medical Center's Vice President for Surgery. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th, I want to thank our employees for their unsurpassed dedication to our patients. I'm Dr. Tim Wright. Quality health care would not be possible without the efforts of each and every employee. Thank you and happy Hospital Week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the E-Max. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. Following is a paid advertisement. Have you been injured in a car wreck? You're unable to work and don't know what to do or where to turn. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, is ready to take your case. Call 606-369-1807. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, will come to your house and talk with you. He'll provide you with respectful and professional representation. Paul Howard Jr. will make sure you get the compensation you're entitled to. Located at 118 Caroline Avenue in Pikeville. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law. 606-369-1807. Commonwealth Pharmacy guarantees fast and friendly service with the availability of a convenient drive through Pharmacists Jody and Joanne Holland offer exceptional patient care and quality customer service. All insurance and compensation is accepted. Commonwealth Pharmacy is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 6 and Saturday from 9 till 2. Commonwealth Pharmacy, 606-437-0701 for all your prescriptions, over-the-counter, and preventative medicinal needs. Welcome back in to EKB TV. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins, and let's take a look at your week in weather. And we had scattered showers just about every day across the region, all but one day, and that would have been on Wednesday. But of course, the temperatures started to jump each and every day from 66 degrees, the high on Monday to 75 on Tuesday, 84 on Wednesday. And then temperatures started to slide back down. A few stronger storms as we worked our way into the day on Thursday. Scattered showers continuing throughout the day on Friday. And Friday's high temperature only 64 degrees. But we are in store for a big warm up as we move into the upcoming week, especially by Wednesday and Thursday. The jet stream goes way off to the north. That allows all this warm and muggy air to make its way closer to the Ohio Valley. By the time we get into Wednesday and Thursday, high temperatures could top out in the mid to upper 80s. A few of us may even flirt with 90 degrees. Sean. Some big changes were announced Monday during the Pikeville City Commissioner's meeting as Pikeville City Manager Donovan Blackburn calls it quits to take on a leading role at Pikeville Medical Center. During executive session at Monday's Pikeville City Commission meeting, 13-year Pikeville City Manager Donovan Blackburn tendered his resignation to the commissioners as he has accepted a position at Pikeville Medical Center as assistant CEO. And as life goes at times, uh, new opportunities present themselves. And there's a time for you to, uh, to take advantage of those opportunities. When you looked at so grows the city, so has Pikeville Medical Center. Uh, under the wonderful leadership of their board of directors uh, through uh, the direction of, of Walter May has taken an institution and, and has really uh, created a, a, a mega facility that adds tremendous value to this community. Although Blackburn is leaving some big shoes to fill, the city has been prepared in case of such an event. Under his leadership, a year or two ago, we, we put a couple of deputy commi uh, city commissioners in place and we moved some people around. For this very reason, ho hopefully it would never come, but we want to be prepared and not 
you know, be left without. Uh, so tonight, so we have voted for Philip Ellswick to be the interim city manager under Donovan's guidance for the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Blackburn's last day with the city will be announced at a later time. The Pikeville City Commission meeting not only saw a changing of the guard with the position of Pikeville City Manager, but with Pikeville Police Chief as well. Assistant Chief of Police Chris Edmonds was officially appointed as Chief. Edmonds not only brings years of experience to the position, but some new ideas as well. Maybe some new ideals uh, that we hadn't looked at prior. You know, we, uh, we take a big honor in bringing our community into what we do. Uh, and Chief Reed has done that well, as good as anybody could do with the uh, children. I'm gonna try to implement maybe bringing our people just to live here, our elderly people into some things and uh, get them involved in what we do. Um, that's, that's one of my big focal points for the first part of my tenure. Chief Edmonds went on to say that it's the patrolmen that deserve all the credit and recognition for what the department has been able to do over the last few years. Local law enforcement and first responders involved in security during the April 29th white supremacist rally were honored during Monday's Pikeville City Commission meeting. In addition to the praise given by the city manager, Donovan Blackburn, and each commissioner, Pikeville Mayor Jimmy Carter made two impromptu motions that were passed to honor them further. We thought it was very important uh, to reward our officers in, in, in a couple different ways. And, and one of them was the blue line that we're gonna have uh, painted on Main Street uh, and Division Street at so some of the suggestion of the officers. The blue line down Main Street where the officers stood tall and down Division Street where the Fallen Memorial is all the way to the police station. Another way that we thought that we could honor is give them a one-time, we won't call it a bonus, it's a one-time pay increase of $500. We feel that was very well earned and very well deserved and, and earned, so we were, we're gonna put that out to all of our police, fire, EMS, and dispatch. The thin blue line is expected to be completed by next Tuesday's Officer Appreciation Ceremony that will be held from noon until 1 at the East Kentucky Expo Center. Coming up next, One East Kentucky receives $50,000 and a woman has been indicted for stealing over $25,000 worth of Girl Scout cookies. Those stories and more are coming up next on This Week. Hi, I'm Michelle Hagee, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer at Pikeville Medical Center. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, we ask you to join us May 7th through the 13th to recognize our outstanding employees. I'm Dr. Kevin Pugh. Pikeville Medical Center's employees not only offer professional skills to patients, but provide them with compassion and understanding. Thank you for all that you do and happy Hospital Week. Attention small business owners, Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes, you're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-706-9477. That's 800-706-9477. East Kentucky Broadcasting salutes our first responders and local officials for their handling of the recent demonstrations in Pikeville. When neo-Nazi white supremacists and anti-fascist outsiders arrived, they were met with a well-organized and executed plan. We allowed them to exercise their rights, but also ensured that no civil unrest or violence took place. We're proud to be headquartered in Pikeville, Kentucky. EKB, your truly local news source. 
A Floyd County Girl Scout leader could face up to 10 years in prison for stealing tens of thousands of dollars worth of Girl Scout cookies. 26-year-old Leanne Vick of Oxshire, who served as a Girl Scout troop leader, has been accused of stealing $26,000 worth of Girl Scout cookies. She was indicted in Pike County this week on $15,000 of that alleged theft from the Wilderness Road Chapter Girl Scouts of America, which covers eastern Kentucky. The other $11,000 worth of cookies she allegedly stole from Boyd County. She has yet to be indicted for those cookies. Uh, once she got these cookies and maybe even picked up some cookies for some other troops that she happened to see sitting there at the distribution center, uh, nobody has seen Leanne Vick since then. They've not seen the cookies and they certainly haven't seen the money. Vick is charged with a Class C felony of theft, which carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. Kentucky Power Wednesday presented a grant to industrial recruiter One East Kentucky. The presentation took place following One East Kentucky's board meeting Thursday on the campus of Big Sandy Community and Technical College in Prestonsburg. The grant is the third installment in a five-year, $250,000 commitment to help bring jobs to Floyd, Knott, Johnson, Lawrence, Letcher, McGoffin, Martin, Perry, and Pike Counties. Uh, today we're presenting a $50,000 investment to One East Kentucky. Um, we are a partner in One East Kentucky, and these funds come from a program we call KPEG, which stands for Kentucky Power Economic Growth Grants. These are funds that the Public Service Commission allowed us to create utilizing our customers' investment as well as our stockholders' investment. Our customers pay 15 cents a month on their power bills, and our stockholders match that 15 cents a month, which creates a fund of over $600,000 each year that we invest strategically in economic development initiatives in eastern Kentucky and the 20 counties that we serve. And so today we're presenting $50,000 of that money to One East Kentucky uh, for their mission in recruiting and bringing industry to the region. You know, AEP Kentucky Power is a fantastic partner for economic development all throughout their service territory here in eastern Kentucky. Both the KPEG program and the KEEP program not only help fund missions for recruiting new economic development and recruiting new industry and jobs into the region, but they're also opportunities for us to utilize for other projects, uh, whether it's county-based project, community-based project, or like One East Kentucky is something that helps fund the recruitment missions and the projects that we work on here. Grants from Kentucky are awarded on a competitive basis after applications are reviewed by a six-member committee composed of four Kentucky Power employees and two outside economic development professionals from the Kentucky Association of Economic Development and the Kentucky Economic Development Cabinet. Stay tuned, Michaela Colley's coming up next with sports. We'll be right back on this week. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Harris, Medical Director of Cardiology at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May the 7th through the 13th. We appreciate the nearly 3,300 employees who dedicate their lives to serving others. Hi, I'm Dr. Cody Reynolds. Everyone plays an important role in taking care of our patients at Pikeville Medical Center, from maintenance to housekeeping and nursing and beyond. Happy Hospital Week. By 2020, 56% of Kentucky jobs will require either a college certificate or a college degree. But only one in four public college students will graduate on time, and many may not finish at all. You can put the odds in your favor. Just earn 15 credits each semester, or 30 a year, to finish on time, and save money on tuition. Talk to your advisor and make a plan. Kentucky's colleges and universities agree. Take 15 to finish on time. Get in, get out, get going. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new red copper cookware. The revolutionary pan made with non-stick ceramic and super strong copper. Guaranteed to stay scratch free forever. It's lightweight yet super strong so it won't scratch, peel or chip into your food. Red copper is a baking pan with a handle. It goes into the oven up to 500 degrees and everything slides right out. Cook my healthy crispy chicken fingers with little or no fat or oil. Chop steak and onion for a melty Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely no sticking. Or whisk egg without a mixing bowl, truly a time saver. Call now and receive my 10-inch red copper pan for just $19.99. Plus, get my recipe book free. Call now and you can double the offer and receive a second set. Plus, our new forever sharp copper knife. Just pay a separate fee. Razor sharp and food slides right off. An incredible value. Call now.
Call 1-800-426-0848 to get your special offer, Red Copper Pan. Call now or go to redcopperpan.com. So call 1-800-426-0848. Call now. It's been a big week in sports for high school seniors as they made their commitments to play athletics at the next level. There was a total of six seniors around the area that committed to the collegiate level. The University of Pikeville picked up five of those six athletes across different sports. East Ridge's Dawson Clark and Sheldon Clark's Dylan James will suit up for the Bears basketball program next season under head coach Kelly Wells. Pike Central's Dennison Lowe made his commitment to play football for the University of Pikeville. Alexis Reigns of Eastridge will cheer for the Bears next season and world champion archer Kyle Evans of Tug Valley High School will be one of the lucky members on the inaugural archery team at U-Pike. And for that one senior that will be spreading her wings a little farther than Pike County, Pikeville's Savannah Nunemaker will suit up for the Lady Colonels basketball program at Eastern Kentucky University next season. After leading the nation in scoring for almost the entire high school basketball season, Timmy Dalton has finally made his decision on where he will play basketball. Timmy Dalton originally committed to Salem International University but had second thoughts. Now he's choosing prep school at Believe Prep Academy out of Tennessee. Formerly known as TNG Prep, they're coached by former Belfry and U Pike coach Randy Casey. Of course, our congratulations goes to all of the seniors making their decisions in their journeys. Big changes are coming to Lexington as the KHSAA Council announced this week in their final meeting of the 2016-17 school year. The KHSAA Board of Control announced that six high school football championships Class A to 6A will be moved to their new field at Kroger Field, formerly known as Commonwealth Stadium. For the first time since 1976, the Kentucky High School Football Championships will be decided in Lexington. From 2009 through last season, all of the state championships were held at the Houchins L.T. Smith Stadium in Bowling Green. And for the past two seasons, the final scheduling had to accommodate Western Kentucky University's football team after it qualified for the Conference USA title game. This is good news for those Mountain teams competing in championships cutting off a couple hours of travel time. On the basketball scene for the KHSAA state championships, the board addressed the future of the girls basketball tournament, electing to return to BBNT Arena in Bowling Green for the 2018 Girls Suite 16 before moving to Rupp Arena for 2019 and 2020. The board is also considered moving the Boys Sweet 16 tournament to the final week of college basketball, which would be one week prior to when it's originally scheduled. And big news for one former Mountain athlete as Johnson Central's J.J. Jude, Kentucky's all-time leading rusher in high school football, will have the opportunity to possibly play professionally in the NFL. Jude announced via Twitter on Tuesday that he received an invitation to the Los Angeles Chargers minicamp. While a Golden Eagle, Jude ranks first in career rushing yards for 8,633 and single game rushing yards at 584. In college at Georgetown, Jude rushed for 772 yards and averaged just over 70 yards a game. Jude also spent some time at Eastern Kentucky University and now maybe some time with the Chargers. Of course, that was a big week in this week for sports. Stay tuned next week so we can tell you more about it. All right, thanks, Michaela. On Monday, we introduced an exceptional kid from East Ridge, Thomas Tombo Looney. And after sharing word of his story on Facebook, he has received over 17,000 views, reaching over 40,000 people across the Facebook scene. In case you haven't already heard of Thomas, here's another look. Thomas Looney, or better known as Tombo, is a junior at East Ridge High School in Pike County. Now, he isn't your average teenager, he's much more. He's an inspiration to his family, his friends, and his community, all while being a man of few words. At birth, Tombo suffered a stroke without explanation, and since he has been diagnosed with autism. There's a gentleness in Thomas that's not in everybody. There's an honoriness in him too, though, and he's petted, he's spoiled, but there's, he's just Tombo, and yeah, he's, he's, he's just amazing. He has made us so proud. He was small and he had to wear little hamstring braces. Never thought he could do any of this. 
The thriving 17-year-old gets the full high school experience. He runs out on the football field every Friday night with the Warriors, and most recently, he made a couple trips around the baseball diamond. What did your teammates say to you when you crossed home? Good job. Good job. Yeah, I mean, you can't describe it when you, when you saw the look on his face. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, but that, and that, you can't just, and you just can't describe the feeling. I mean, it's just overwhelming. What's the coolest part about running on the football field? Um, and everything. Everything. He leads by example. He, he does a lot by example. Uh, he's not, he's a man of a few words, but he, he works really hard, and, and he, he's a good leader with the other boys because he shows them hard work and dedication, and what it means to to persist and, and, and to keep working hard for his dreams and his goals. Tombo is special to everyone he meets, giving all those around him hope that you can overcome any obstacle. Never dreamed that it would be like this. You know, with my older two, they both graduated from here. They were both into sports and popular, and I never dreamed that I would have that chance with Thomas too. But these kids, Simply amazing. He's the best person I know. He uh, he always looked up to me, but he's better now than I could ever be. <laughs> Reporting from Lit Creek, I'm Michaela Colley for EKB Sports. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on this week. Hello, my name is Cheryl Hickman. I'm Vice President assistant to the President CEO at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th. With the commitment and hard work of our employees, we have grown from a small local hospital to a regional referral center. Hi, I'm Dr. Judson Mel. I want to thank all of our PMC employees for always putting our patients first. Happy Hospital Week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the Emax. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction, Hope, and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-876-6387, 800-876-6387. Here are some events coming up this week that you may be interested in. An officer appreciation ceremony will be held at the East Kentucky Expo Center on Tuesday, May 16th from noon till 1 p.m. The ceremony is being held for current, former, and fallen officers. The Barrett family and with Michael Combs will be performing at the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg Saturday, May 20th from 7 to 10 p.m. Tickets are still available at MacArts.com and also by calling 1-888-MacArts. The Paintsville Food City's second annual car show will be held at the Paintsville Food City beginning Saturday, May 20th at 10 a.m. and ending Sunday, May 21st at noon. All proceeds will go to benefit the Johnson County Animal Shelter. There will be door prizes and a 50-50 drawing. Wags the Dog will be on hand to take photos with two- and four-legged family members. Whiskers or Wags will be selling t-shirts, cookbooks, and custom note cards depicting some of our adopted, rescued animals from the shelter. They'll have animals on site available for adoption as well. Registration is at 10 a.m. Saturday with judging at noon. Entry fee for the car show is just $15. Classes include top 10 best in show and best in class. 
Dream Stables will be hosting their first Hatfield McCoy Country Pleasure Horse Show at Bob Amos Park in Pikeville Saturday, May 20th at 6 p.m. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6 p.m. right here on EKB TV for this week. I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.